Hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends. Today, we're going to be starting a new series on the, the seven major events and people in the book of Genesis. And so that's going to be the series is we're going to do seven events and seven major people that are in the book of Genesis as a kind of an overview of the book of Genesis. And today, specifically, we're going to be starting with creation, who and what. Now, the creation story is fairly familiar, but I think we're going to look at some aspects of the creation story as a major event, who and what. And we'll be doing that when we come right back. So welcome back to Bible Study with Friends. As I said, we're starting a Bible study together in a new thing in the seven major figures and seven major events in the book of Genesis. And I'm here with Ricky. How are you doing, Ricky? I'm doing great. Good to, good ready to, to be start with a again. new thing. Let's do it. I'm excited. We're going to be uh, we're going to be doing an, an overview. We're going to okay. we're going to do these events and we'll look at some specifics and details in these major events and major people. But by by the time we're done with the series, we're going to have a good overview of what happens in the book of Genesis and even the order uh, that it happens. So we'll uh, look forward to covering that and look forward to sharing that with you on YouTube. I hope you like this. If you do, hit the like button and subscribe. I'm looking forward to doing this Genesis study with you. I think, I think we're all very familiar with the book of Genesis, uh, especially as kids. You know, when we, if uh, you grew up in the church, you know, you had all those cute, uh, Genesis stories on on felt boards on your in your Sunday school class. You know you've studied all of these major events, but but as adults looking at the book of Genesis to me is completely different than the way we looked at it as kids. Yeah, and I I think even even unchurched people yeah. have a tendency to have a concept that uh, you know uh, yeah God created everything you know that kind of thing. Uh, if there if there is even the remotest belief in God, it's well obviously one of the things God did was He created the universe. If there's a basic belief in God at all, even from the unchurched that haven't heard a lot of these stories, but we're going to try to kind of de nursery rhyme this story. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to take it out of the realm of just a, a, an interesting story. And make it more of what does it mean for us? Uh, who's involved? And why are they involved? And how does that affect us today and our thinking? And we're going to do that starting with creation, who and what. And we'll yeah, be this doing is, that as we go. This is, our, you know, our patriarchs of the faith, you know, the big names that we all know. But man, they are a dumpster fire. They are a bunch of broken, messed up people. And we really get to see that in the book of Genesis. And, I, and hopefully it'll change kind of the way we view Genesis as, as we study this. I think it changes the way we view the scriptures. It also mm -hmm. changes the way we view ourselves because we, sometimes we, it's very easy for us to get down on ourselves about how s screwed up we are and how we make mistakes and how we do, we do, do things wrong. And I think one of the things that uh, I've I've learned in the last 50 years of Bible study is sharing that these godly men and, and women uh, who who are uh, foundations of our faith, kind of founders of our faith, the patriarchs, like you said, Ricky, are, are just as messed up as we are. Yeah. And yet God uses them. God gives them grace. God blesses them. Sometimes God corrects them. But I really see that as that's exactly what he does with me. Yeah. And so I don't get too hard on myself because if I screw up, I go, well, gee, can, can I name the list of, of major figures of the scriptures that screwed up? Uh, yeah, David, Abraham, uh, Isaac, Jacob. I mean, I can, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting um, study yeah. to see how human these people are. So as we go through this, it'll be, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a great study. 
Our goal in doing this is to show and grow a passion for studying God's Word. Mm -hmm. You've had a section where you you might be familiar with, well, yeah, I know all about creation. Uh, I've heard about creation. I've I might have read some stories about creation, but it is our goal to really create in you a passion for looking into it and really looking at what the scriptures say and how that applies to us. And we're going to do that today. We're going to look at verse one and verse two, because some very interesting things in verse one and verse two. This is the major event, the first major event in the book of Genesis is the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. In other words, it was there was nothing there. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. We want to look at a couple of things here. First of all, let's look kind of word for word through this verse. In the beginning, God created. And a lot of people say, well, God is the creator, and that is true. But the Father, God the Father, if they, if we look at God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and we see in creation that all three of them were here. So if we're looking at the major events, we're looking at creation. If we're looking at the major figures of creation, there are three, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all three of them are active in creation. That might be a new thought for some of us, but... Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, you know, I, in in my thinking about, okay, what did I think about before I really began studying the scriptures? I probably would have said God the Father was the one at creation. Yeah, of course. Turn over to John chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 10. All things were were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What's the first word in that verse? All. All things were made through him. Now, the him in the context of John chapter 1, verse 1 through 10, is, so it's talking about Jesus. And verse 3 clearly says that everything was made by and through Jesus. I mean, is, isn't that what it says? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now All look at verse, were made through him. Look at verse 10. Verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. All right. So again, the he is Jesus. And it says yeah. clearly, Jesus was part of the creation. In fact, he, he, it was his, his doing. So you could say, well, God the Father is the, is the planner. God the Son is the creator. And we see that, in, in fact, we, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, we, you and I just did 1 Peter verse by verse. In, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, it talks about Jesus is the one who is the creator. So if we say the Father is the creator, uh, Jesus isn't, we're missing it. Yeah. Now, if you said God is the creator, well, that is true because Jesus is God. So to say God is the creator would be say, well, yeah, uh, God the Father was there, God the Son was there, and God the Holy Spirit was there. In fact, we see in the next verse, the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the world, of the waters. So in verse 2, you see the Holy Spirit is there, and he's... He's moving over what is going to become creation of the world. So we see clearly in the beginning, God in the person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, were involved. So if we said, who's the major figure of creation, we'd have to say all three members of the Trinity yep. are the figures in creation. So you said God the Father was the planner, Son was the creator. Yeah. What would you say for the Spirit in this verse? He's the facilitator. Get... He, he's yeah. the one that's actually moving over the the uh, the waters. I, I believe that he is involved in the same way he is involved with, well, the same way in salvation. Uh, God the Father is the, has the plan of salvation. God the Son is the one who executes it by by dying on the cross. He fulfills the the plan of God. And the Holy Spirit facilitates that to us. And so I see that same role being happening here where it's God the Father's plan for creation. We're going to see why he wants to do creation in the first place. Then the Son, he's the one that does the work of the plan, same as in salvation. 
And then the, the, the Holy Spirit facilitates that in how that relates to us. So I see that same function of the Trinity that I see in salvation, that I see in, in a Christian's life. The Father has a plan for you. The Father, God has a will for you. Jesus makes it possible for that will to apply to you specifically, you personally, by accepting him as your Savior and Lord. And he's the controlling factor of your life, right? Yep. But who, who facilitates God's will in your life day to day, moment by moment? It's the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yep. See? So I see that same functioning in, in the major figures of creation. Now, I want to go back. There's an interesting word right here. Now, I'm using the New American Standard version. Are, are you in the New American Standard also, Ricky? Um, I'm actually ESV this morning. Okay. Uh, I want That's great because I want you can follow along in any version you want to, but I, I want us to compare some things. Do you use the word in the beginning God created? Yeah, mine says in the beginning God created. All right. Down in verse 7, what does verse 7 say in the ESV? And God made okay. the, expanse, the expanse and the separated the waters that were <clears throat> under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. Okay, great. Yeah. I stopped and did a Bible study on what does the word create mean? And what is the difference between create and made? Because yeah. if it was the same thing, why didn't God, why didn't it say in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth? God created the expanse. Why didn't he use the same word? Why, why is there two different words? So I, so I, I looked into that and I did a study. So let's look at this because this is a major event. God created. What does that mean in your mind? You know, he, he created. <laughs> God, you know, God made it. He yeah. was the designer. He was the executor of, of the world, the heavens and the earth. Okay. And, and, you're, and you're right. Those are, those are good definitions. But it's interesting to stop and think, you know, that's what we, we talk about doing these Bible studies verse by verse. We, we yeah. want to stop and not just go over things, but ask ourselves the question, what does it mean to create? And what's the difference between create and made? And we, we want to think about that and meditate and even do some, do some research. So I want to show you the Hebrew word for create. When it says God created, the Hebrew word for create is bara. B-A-R-A, -A, or bara, I don't know which. It's important that that means created from nothing, to, to make from nothing. So it wasn't that there was a whole bunch of elements around, and God took those elements and made the heavens and the earth. The Hebrew word that's used for create in, John, in uh, Genesis 1-1 is God created out of nothing. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. That God is showing that he's God because he doesn't need to take things and reform them to make. This idea that, that earth was was formed out of, out of uh, all kinds of elements and primordial ooze and all that kind of stuff. He created from nothing, the heavens and the earth. Yep. And I, I really like that study. Now, the word made is a completely different word in Hebrew. It's, it's asha. Asha means to accomplish or appoint from something. So that, that word down there that, that says God made the expanse, that God then forms the expanse out of something. So this, this leaves room for the idea that God used scientific things. He used the laws of nature to create. The miracle is how quickly he did, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But there's a there's a difference between created and made. And then look down at chapter 2, verse 7 of Genesis. Chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. Now, we could say technically, did God create man? Yes, he did. In fact, there's a verse that says he created man. The word formed... When, when it talks about he formed man in his own image, that means he, he took the, that term is yetzar. It, it's a completely different Hebrew word from create. It's a completely different word from made. It's yetzar is a to, to form 
personally, to be involved personally in forming, to fashion. And it it's a technical word that's used by potters. When potters make a pot, they don't make the pot in the sense of they don't create the clay. They don't, you know, they don't create the pot out of nothing. They fashion the pot out of personally molding it. And that's the word that's used for the creation of man that God personally forms man and kind of, I can see clay being kind of pushed and moved. And what does he use? He uses dirt to make man and he, and he forms this and does this into his own image. And that's, that's the third miracle of creation used in these words. So the first one is God creates out of absolutely nothing. God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need anyone to create. He just decides to create and he creates. And we're talking about the Trinity here. And the the other thing is, is he accomplishes or appoints things to happen by using things. That's a shah. That's, that's made. So as you go through the book of Genesis on your own and you do a study, there's a difference between God created and God made and God fashioned. And I thought that was an interesting side Bible study to do. On those key words, that was that uh, a, a blessing. I hope. Yeah, that was a blessing. Now it's interesting yeah. that when it says the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters, we could ask ourselves the question: Well, what was God's? What was God thinking? And one of the questions we're going to talk about is why did God create? I think one of the answers is to create out of the void. He decided to, to create the earth. Let me ask some questions, Ricky. Do you think do you think God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, needed a physical place to live? No. So they didn't create the earth so that, that it, would, it would be a place for them. Right. Right? So we think about why do you think God created the earth and this whole process in Genesis? Why did he do it? He didn't need to. Why did he even want to? And, you know, and he, I don't, I think another good question, you know, was God lonely? Is that why he created, you know, he wanted, uh, wanted well, to we got to be careful there because we know that God already had created angels. Yeah. So that's not a, that's not a good, um, and a question either. Yeah. So, and you know, was, was God lonely? Well, no, number one, God has God. He has the father, the son and the Holy spirit. And they, they are in fellowship together. Right. He's he got already got his community. And he's and he's perfect and he's complete. So it's not like God isn't he's not complete until he does creation. Yeah. So we got to be careful. He's not he's not lonely in the sense of there's nobody else around. The angels are there. There's angels under his throne room. The cherubim are there, the seraphim are above the throne room and worshiping him and praising him. And he's got the the legion of angels to do his bidding. In fact, he talks about the universe, the, the, the stars, the orbits, all that stuff are really, God uses angels to put the stars there and to make them happen. So I don't think it's because God is lonely. Well, and creation is, has nothing to do with God being um, lacking anything. You know, he, right. he's, he didn't right. do it because of some um, lack of sufficiency in you know, so when it talks new- about, it, it's cool because when he talks about the spirit of God was moving over the surface and you go, well, what was the spirit of God doing? What was God doing? What was Jesus doing when they decided to make, create, and fashion the creation we see around us? They do all three of those things. Yep. And we, we know it's all three is involved because they say when it comes to making man, God talking to himself basically says let us make man in our image yeah so the trinity all three of the trinity are involved with creation so if we ask why well we could say god was looking for someone to freely worship and freely fellowship with him remember angels didn't really have free will angels were created as servants of god they were created beings uh, they're, they're not eternal. They were created at a point in time and they serve God and that's their function. That's what they were made for. 
But it's interesting that God had a desire for a relationship with someone who willingly, freely decided to have a relationship with him. Now, we can we know from Scripture that what the Holy Spirit was doing when he was moving over the void was he was thinking about you and me. And this is cool to think about. What was God thinking before there was anything? He was thinking about you and me. Look at, look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. When God says, I need to create the earth, and I'm going to create the earth, and I'm going to create man, and I'm going to create them to populate and to have a relationship with me. When he was doing that, he was thinking about me, and he was thinking about Ricky Allison. It, it blows your mind. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14, or verse 4, I'm sorry. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Now think about that. He chose to have a relationship with us. He chose us for a, re- a personal relationship. But when did he choose you? Before the foundation of the world. You get it? That takes mm-hmm. us right back to Genesis 1. That is that is Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Before there was anything, what was God thinking? He was thinking about us, and he was thinking about having a relationship with us, a free will, loving relationship between man and him. And it's kind of cool to think about what was on God's mind was he was thinking about me. If we very quickly look at the event of creation, if we, if we look at the creation itself, look at down at, at, at verse four, God saw that the light was good. God, God created light. Let there be light. He basically said, I'm going to allow there to be light. Let that happen. And instantly it happens. And God saw that the light was what? Good. Good. Now, we see that through this whole thing. If you look down at verse 10, God called the dry land earth and gathering the waters he called seas. And he saw that it was every day of the six days of creation, he sees it's good. And at the end, look, look down at verse 31. And God saw everything that he made and behold, it was very good. I want us to consider something. What was good about it? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I don't know that I necessarily have. It's a good question. But why is it a good accomplishment? I mean, what, it's not good for God. God doesn't need it. He doesn't mm-hmm. need land. He doesn't need light. He doesn't need food. He doesn't need uh, the moon, the stars. He doesn't need those things. It was good for us. So, you know, it, was all things, it was all things that we're going to need. That's right. The creation was good for provision for his loved ones. They are created for us as a provision. Now, it, it, light was good so that we could see. Mm-hmm. In fact, light is used through the whole scripture as uh, to, to be able to see the difference between darkness and light, to be able to perceive things. We use light to navigate. We use light to, to see in the dark. We use light all the time. Light was used to, to, to reveal Christ was born in the light of the stars. So, Light is for our good. It's for our provision. We use light. We need light. Yeah. God doesn't need light. It, it, we can go through all these things and say, every time he says it is good, we can say, it is good for me. It's good for us. He gave us land so we had a place to dwell. He, so that we, we didn't, we're not spirits. We, we, have, we have to have a place to, to live. He made fruit so that we could have food to eat. And that it would taste good. We would be delighted in it. He makes the sun, the moon, and the stars. And you think about, well, why did he do that? Because he creates time. Now, God doesn't need time. God is timeless. But he creates time for us as a provision for us to keep track of seasons, to keep track of day or night, to keep track of of whatever it is. Now, he doesn't need that. But you see why that's a provision for us? And it's a good provision for us. And then it creates He creates animals so that we can eat and later so that we can even have skins and have clothing, have leather. And then he he creates the fish, same same reason, so that we could eat. Now, he doesn't need fish and he doesn't need animals and he doesn't need fruit. So when he says, that's good, he's saying, that is really good for my creation, for the people that I'm going to create. And he creates man and he says, that's good. That's an interesting perspective to get. 
if Jesus yeah. is thinking about us and he's thinking about me specifically, he creates light for me. He creates food. He creates land so that I have a place to live. He creates it to please me. Why did God create a bunch of colors and tastes and, and that kind of stuff in our vision? To be a delight, to be good. He could have made everything in black and white, you know, yeah. and he could have made everything just taste you know this is kind of like science fiction here's your nutrients and it's got no taste at all he could have done that but yet he makes it delightful he makes it good for us now that's when we're thinking about genesis we think about he he was thinking about us before he started anything and he said okay if i need a place for len allen to live and eat and and see and function. I need to create an earth. And if I want Ricky Allison to have a place, I need to create an earth. Yep. So literally before the foundations of the earth, he thought about us and having a relationship with us and created with us in mind. Is that cool? That's cool. That's a great new, uh, fresh look at the creation. This is an interesting study. And that's this. Look at verse five and read verse five real quickly. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning one day. All right. Now, there are a lot of people that will say, well, one day to, to God, one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one God day. And, and yeah. a, a day means kind of an era or an age. And, and it was, mm -hmm. this was thousands and thousands of years God created light and he creates the dark, the, the earth, and he creates all these plants and everything. It took them thousands of years and millions of years, maybe. And that's, that's a very common thought. But what makes creation a miracle is God does not use a scientific timetable. In fact, the word day here in the Hebrew is yom, Y-O-M. And the word yom, if you if you look at that, when he says one day and the second day and the third day, and he uses that term, it's always yom. And the word yom means a 24-hour day. It mean, literally means a, a physical day. So the miracle of creation is God created in six days and rested on the seventh day. And these were 24-hour periods. Now, God used something that could be explained scientifically because he's a God of order and he's a God who understands those things. So he, the fact that, that God created, uh, you know, air in one day, but there's a scientific process that would take place. That doesn't bother me at all. God is totally capable of controlling time and saying, I, I'm going to create something instantly out of nothing. That's that word for create, but I'm going to create it with a history. Yeah. In fact, if we look at the first G miracle Jesus did in Canaan, and I'll, I'll digress here just a moment. When he creates the water into wine, he doesn't just create water into wine. He creates water into really good wine. Well, really yeah. good wine has to be old. Age. Yeah. Changes the water completely and instantly into grape juice and then he instantly changes that grape juice into wine he ferments it instantly ferments. and then he takes that alcohol he instantly gives it an age yep and that is exact that's the first miracle jesus does and it is a picture of creation where god takes something and he he changes it completely in fact in it's at the beginning, he changes it out of nothing. He creates it. And then he makes it. Mm -hmm. And he makes it with a history instantly. So the fact that there is a scientific history to creation doesn't bother me a bit. But the fact is, scripturally, it's seven 24-hour days. Yeah. And that's a major event. That's the first major event. And the first major figure's of Genesis, as it should be, is God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, and the fact that he's creating with you in mind. If you ever think you're insignificant, you, you, you're you nothing. Think about the fact that the reason God created the world was for you. Ephesians makes it clear. You were on his mind before he made anything, and you were on his mind before the foundation of the earth, and he said, 
you know, if I need a place for Len or I need a place for Ricky or I need a place for you, I got to create a place. And he creates a good world to provide as a provision for us. And he's been providing for us ever since, including the, he provides the plan of salvation. He provides sanctification for believers who accept him as savior and Lord. He's a provider. And that goes all the way back to creation. Amen. Let's, let's, let's sum this up with some thoughts, Ricky. What do you, what do you think? You know, like, kind of like what we said at the beginning, you know, let's, let's dive into Genesis more than just what we know. Um, you know, cute little, oh, God created on the first day, you know, but the fact that the triune God was thinking of me when he created the world, when he created certain things because he knew that I would need it, that it would give us good pleasure, that uh, would ultimately give him glory. Um, it's just a really great new look at uh, creation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing that when, when I think of what was God thinking when he created? He was thinking of me. It says that mm -hmm. clearly in Ephesians. What yep. was he thinking when Jesus was hanging on the cross for three hours? Well, who was he thinking about? He was thinking about me. Yep. He was dying for me. And he was dying yep. for you personally. What a blessing we get out of this. And when it talks about, there's two verses. Psalm 19.1 talks about creation being meant to point us towards God, to remind us of God's glory and God's graciousness towards us. And Romans 1.20 says, we see God in his creation. Mm -hmm. So he's revealing himself to us. That's the provision of creation. I'm going to create people I'm going to have a relationship with, and I'm going to reveal myself what kind of God I am in that flowers are beautiful yeah. and fruit has a great taste and meat is healthy for you. I mean, yeah. these are all good provisions because he was thinking about us. And he wanted to show us he was thinking about us and he wanted to be a blessing to us. You know, every good and perfect gift comes from above and it's so obvious at creation. Yeah. When it says in, in Romans eleven thirty six, everything is from him. Everything is through him and everything is to him. And so we see everything came from God. Everything is lived through Christ. In fact, through Christ and everything is given to him in glory. So we can really look at creation and we can praise God, and we can see that as a major event and the major figures in our first look in the book of Genesis. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If it has been, like it, subscribe. We'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your comments about creation and what it means to you, what the provision of all these things means to you, and the fact that God is thinking about you before he makes anything is amazing. That, that thought alone can blow your mind. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. So God bless you. See you then. <music>